Welcome back, guys. Our training just started last week, and that's what our series is all about, training to grow our faith. Last week, we started our training with learning how to hear God's voice. And I'll give you an example of how that works. Imagine monkeys in the zoo. You know the sound, but God's voice isn't usually audible. Sometimes you see them in words, especially when you're reading your Bible. The words will stick out to you amongst all the other words. Or you feel it and you know what's being said to you. But it takes practice. And the reason why we want to know God's voice is because this is how He guides us. And we can grow a relationship with Him this way. But this week, our focus will be on learning how to talk to God, just like a friend or a father. So heat up some popcorn, grab a drink, and get ready, because it's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four Gospels that tell about the life of Jesus. For three years, Jesus traveled from town to town, sharing about God's kingdom and healing people. Near the beginning of this time, Jesus went up on the mountainside and sat down to teach his followers. The things that Jesus taught there have come to be known as the Sermon on the Mount. More and more people gathered as Jesus explained what it means to be part of God's kingdom. And what it means to show love to God and to others. For example, one of the best ways that we can show love to God is to talk with God in prayer. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. The Sermon on the Mount marked a key moment in Jesus' ministry. It laid out the very most important things for his followers. Jesus began by talking about who and what is valued in God's kingdom. It seems upside down from what is most important in most kingdoms. Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Did you hear that? Jesus said the people who are most blessed are actually those who are humble and admit they need help. He went on to include people who were sad and people who make peace and show mercy. Jesus went on to explain how we should treat others in God's kingdom with kindness, compassion, and integrity. But he said we should never do it for show. Be careful not to do good deeds in front of other people. Do not do these deeds to be seen by others. God's kingdom is never about looking better or more perfect than someone else. That even goes for the way we talk to God. When you pray, do not be like those who only pretend to be holy. They love to stand and pray in synagogues and on the street corners. They want to be seen when they pray. Go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father where you can't be seen. Now that doesn't mean you can only talk to God in your room, but it does mean that prayer should never just be for show. It's a real honest conversation with the God who made you and the entire universe. Jesus gave his followers a kind of outline to use when talking to God. We call it the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us all our sins, just as we also have given those who sin against us. Keep us from sinning when we are tempted and save us from the evil one. This beautiful prayer, then spoken by believers all over the world for nearly 2,000 years. It's a great one to memorize, but you can also put this in your own words too. Let's give it a go. Our Father in heaven, may your name be honored. By calling on God as Father, we show our trust in God to take care of us. And we want everyone to know that God loves them more deeply than they can imagine. May your kingdom come. May what you want to happen be done on earth as it is in heaven. We know that God will one day make everything right, but we also know that God is at work here and now. We can invite God to make things right and offer ourselves to be part of that process. Give us today our daily bread. When we ask God for anything we need each day, that includes our food, of course, but we also need wisdom, patience, and joy as we go through each day and forgive us our sins, just as we also have forgiven those who have sinned against us. None of us are perfect. We mess up every day, but God invited us to ask for forgiveness, to clean the slate. This helps us stay close to God. It makes us able to forgive and stay close to others too. It also keeps us from sinning when we are tempted. 
save us from the evil one. Sin is anything that breaks our relationship with God. We can ask God for help to make choices that show love to God and others, even in tough situations. Now your version of this prayer can fit the unique way that God made for you. It might go something like this. Dear God, thank you for being a good father. Please help everyone to see how much you love them and please make everything right in our world. Just like it already is in heaven. Please give me food to eat and everything I need today to be kind and brave. Forgive me for the wrong things I've done and help me forgive others just as quickly when I'm tempted to make a wrong choice. Please give me the strength to choose wisely. Whether you take time in a quiet moment to pray with this whole prayer or quickly cry out to God for help in a tough situation, God promises to hear every word and to be with you through it all. The end. I love to think of all the people over 2,000 years who have said this prayer, like we are praying right now. And I think that's exactly what Jesus meant to happen. So what's our part in this story? Our part is simple. You can grow in your faith when you practice talking to God. You can follow the outline of the Lord's Prayer, but you can also simply tell God what's on your heart or what you needed in that moment. And you can talk to God anytime, anywhere. Like when you wake up in the morning, or before school, or at mealtime. For me, it's in the car. Anytime, anywhere. You can also thank God for all the good things in your life, even the small ones, like a cozy bed, or a smile from a friend. And you can talk to God when you're worried. God promises to be with you when you're anxious, or scared, or sad. Talking to God during those moments is a great way to remember that you're not alone, and God is always excited to hear from you. So here's the thing. Practice praying to God. And the more you practice connecting with God, the more prayer can become an automatic reaction in any tough situation. So let's do just that and finish with prayer, guys. Gather those hands. God, thank you for teaching us how to pray and then listening to every prayer we pray. We are so grateful that you listen to us and that you value what we have to say. Help remind us to talk to you continually like we talk to a friend. We want to be close to you, and we love you, and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll see you guys next week, so go out there and talk to God whenever you can. Later, guys.